Welcome to the Mulazgar Memorial Library and Resource Center and to the Koja Symposium. Thank you all for giving up your Saturday to attend the Koja Symposium. My name is uh, Shafiq Ibrahim and I will be your Master of Ceremonies today. As the uh, program flyer said, whether you are a Koja or not, or are just curious as to what a Koja is, you have come to the right place. To either confirm your belief, or by the end of today, you will be convinced of being a Koja. To help us in this, we have very eminent and dynamic Koja speakers in Dr. Siptain by Panjwani, Alhaj Hassan by A.M. Jafar, Dr. Hasnain by Walji, and Dr. Iqbal by Akhtar. Can I? And just if, by the end of today, you are not convinced that you are a Koja, our three em four eminent speakers have agreed to have a private one-on-one -on -one session with you over pilau and chai to convince you otherwise. Our program for today will start with Quran reflection, followed by remarks to be delivered by our key Koja personalities. That will be followed by a first session with uh, Dr. Akhtar, followed by Sipten by Panjwani, who will then break for Zohar Salat and lunch around 1 p.m. Session two will commence with uh, Hassan Bai Jaffer and Dr. Walji, and we'll close off the program with word of thanks and volunteer appreciation. To begin our program, I call upon an equally eminent Koja scholar, Dr. Hussein Bai Kimji, for Quran reflection. Dr. Hussein Bai. Audhu billahi min shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Laisal birra an tuwalu wujuha kum qibal al mashrik wal maghrib. ولا أكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وعات المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي رقاب وقام الصلاة وعات الزكاة والموفون بأهدهم إذا آهدوا والسابرين في الباساء والضراء وحين الباس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون صدق الله العظيم You will see in the translation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals and says the righteousness or the piety is not whether you turn your faces towards east or towards west. But the real righteousness is to believe in God, to believe in Allah, in the last day, in the angels, in the book, that is revealed books, in the messengers. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say go on the rituals. But here now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, tells the real piety then is first the belief. And then Im immediately after that, to spend of your substance out of love for him, for your kin, for your orphans, for orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask 
and for the ransom of slaves. Now, the scholars are explaining to us in modernity, what does this mean, ransom of slaves? The modern scholars in modernity are actually telling us that anyone who is chained up by lone sharks who have got loans and they are tied up in the chains and every year whatever interest they are paying, they are not paying towards principal. And it keeps on compounding all the time. They are slaved in, in the loans. So relieving them is, according to the modern scholars, is you know, ransom of slaves. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, to be steadfast in your prayer. Again, after that again, and to practice regular charity, to, fill, to fulfill the contracts which you have made, and to be firm and patient in the time of pain or suffering, in the times of adversity, and throughout all periods of panic. Such are the people of truth, and such are the people who are truly muttaqeen. These are the ones who are truly, who have got the real fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our fear here does not mean Allah is not an ogre. Fear does not mean that kind of, but fear that we do not lose the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as children might have fear that, you know, that their parents do not turn away from them. You see, that kind of fear, fear of love, the fear that comes with love. So this is then, is considered to be total ethics, where, you know, the righteousness is not just, you know, rituals, but it is to show the iman, the faith should be manifested in actions, and what are those actions is shown very clearly in this particular ayat. Now, there are, you know, beautiful commentaries about it, so if you want any references, you know, please see me. Uh, but uh, the chapter number is two, and the verse number 177, that gives complete explanation of true ethics in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Please welcome the leader of over 5,000 Kujas in the greater Toronto area and the president of the ISIJ of Toronto, Shabi Jaraj. Thank you, Shafiq, for that introduction. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All praise belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and to Him we submit totally and seek for help and guidance. We thank Him for the many bounties, and we recognize that it is through His mercy and compassion that He created us human beings to live in a, among different nations and tribes, with multiple skin tones and communicating in a variety of languages, and that He also provided living guides and leaders who teach us how to live peacefully and coexist amongst one another. Distinguished panel of speakers, respected scholars, directors of MARC, and the organizing team, my elders, brothers and sisters, salamu alaikum. I'm indeed very much delighted to participate in this symposium and be surrounded by some of the best talents and intellectual cadre and the critical thinkers we are to find in the global Shia community. And I'm not exaggerating. Being a long-time long self-styled student and an observer of the community affairs myself, and having a deep-seated fascination with leadership models and styles, I cannot help myself from being a little overwhelmed today. For this, I commend the Mark team for not only coming up with a brilliant topic of discussion, which is long overdue, but actually hosting it in Toronto and inviting the best speakers so that all of us are here are able to participate and benefit from it. For that, I say thank you and jazakallah. Some 30 years ago, when I first set foot in Toronto, I came across a people of dark brown skin, very much like my own. But even though being of an Indian origin, they appeared and talked differently from the rest of us. Let me make it clear, I have no intention whatsoever of denigrating or looking down upon others, especially those from the Caribbean islands. Over the years, I've come to appreciate and respect some of them that I have rubbed shoulders with. Suffices to point out and register the initial shock of encountering people 
were assimilated totally in the local dominant culture and lost complete touch with the ancestral origins. We even discussed this among ourselves and said, this will never happen to us. 35 years later, while the circumstances may be different, I am now less confident in uttering the same words. When the discussion comes up in our private gatherings, the most pessimistic of us would say, it is not a question of if, but when. And that when is just two generations away. Personally, I'm not that pessimistic, but I, I do see the signs and a rising tide of spiritual and cultural dilution, especially among the younger generation of those who have very little connection with the Koja community. Either they are living and growing up far in isolated locations or prefer to be away from the community as they do not find the need or reasons to get involved. More disquieting is the rapid transformation of our values, mores, and attitudes that I'm seeing even among those of my own generation. So I find myself searching for answers on how to stem this tide before it is too late and we are ready to throw the towel in. This is what has brought me here with a sense of humility and appreciation of the hard work that these gentlemen have taken upon themselves. And I do wish them from the bottom of my heart that they carry on the good work and become the beacon that will guide us should we find ourselves in the dark, not knowing which direction to take. Before I end, I have a small ask to make. As is customary when we have seminars and training sessions in the corporate realm, we are often asked to articulate our expectations of the session that we are about to take part in. And we review it at the end. Therefore, my expectation of this symposium is that while we spend time to, rel to relate the Koja history and explain the moral and ethical imperatives on why we should promote the rich and illustrious cultural heritage, we should also conduct a candid assessment of where we stand today. Then come up with credible and achievable solutions or guidelines that can be applied globally or locally. I thank you all for listening. I wish you the very best to the panel and enjoyable and most satisfying and rewarding afternoon for the rest. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Rabbi. Many things to ponder upon during the course of today. Not to be outdone, our next speaker is an equally imposing Koja personality. And don't let his quiet demeanor fool you, for he is a go-getter. Please welcome Golambas by Najafi President Nasimko. Respected scholars, distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, and my elders, salamun alaikum. It gives me a great pleasure to be here with all of you today at the Koja Heritage Symposium. On behalf of Nasimko, I would like to commend and congratulate the Mark entire team on the wonderful and excellent programs and exhibitions that they organize here at the Mullah Asghar Memorial, Li Memorial Library and Islamic Resource Center. There is also a debt of gratitude to Dr. Hasnain Walji, who conceived the idea of creating these resource centers around the globe. We are very fortunate that Toronto has won and being utilized to its fullest. The center has not only become a place of learning, but a forum where ideas can be exchanged, give multi-generations an opportunity to understand their history and origins, bring communities together, provide multi-faith and outreach connections to be made stronger. Programs like the one this weekend are great examples of this and testament to something that Marum Mullah Sahib strived for and worked tirelessly on throughout his life. Thank you for attending the session today, and especially the guest speakers who have traveled from across the continent and overseas to join us and share their insights and knowledge. I look forward to hearing our esteemed panel of speakers and engaging in the dialogue. Finally, let us please recite a Surah Fatiha 
from our own Mullah Sahib and all Marumin Al Fatiha. Thank you, Gulam Basbai. Every community has its own and unique personalities who are passionate in preserving the community's history and heritage. And the Koja community is no different. This individual has served the community at its highest level with the World Federation of Koja Shia Itznashri Muslim Communities, is the producer of the documentary, The Kojas, A Journey of Faith. Please welcome Dr. Hasnain Baiwalji. <laughs> أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم President Toronto Jamaat, President Nasimko My fellow panelists, we will be introducing them so I shall not name them just yet to keep those of you who don't know them in suspense My brothers and sisters in Iman, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh It gives me immense pleasure to be here to participate in this much anticipated event that we had been planning for some time. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, we have been able to gather the Mu'mineen today, not just to come and listen, but to have conversation. So, welcome to the Mullah Askar Memorial Resource Center in short, we call it Mark. I'd like to take just a few moments to acknowledge we will go through a vote of thanks towards the end. But the panelists have traveled from far and wide and we'll be introducing them. But I also would like to acknowledge the presence of someone without whose moral support, whose financial support, and whose shared vision, this Mark would have been difficult to set up. He has traveled all the way from Madagascar to attend and be with us today. Thank you very much, Ghazali Bhai, for you know, the support and your encouragement for us to have this beautiful center. I will. <laughs> of course, I must acknowledge the successive leadership of Toronto Jamaat for us being here and through you, Mr. President, I would like to express my appreciation of the wonderful hospitality and the host Toronto Jamaat has been. Further ado, I would also like to acknowledge, in particular, the experiences that we had when we were building this, and I can never forget this. When I see Razak Bai here, I can never forget that we had to walk through muddy fields here arguing with Arif, I don't see Arif here today, uh, uh, but in this muddy field here as to what you see today. And thank you once again. I cannot you know, acknowledge enough. So thank you, Razak Bhai. Uh, Sheikh Hussein has always been so very accommodating, and he's been our spiritual and religious guide. Thank you, and thank you, Shafiq, as always, for standing by us, not to mention our team, and we will come to that, but Thank you, everyone, for coming. 